Okay, so today's topic is what we started yesterday. We just did the facts kind of, uh, which is Bizui uh, Tamid Chachamin, which we're going to have to translate that also, like Bizui. I, I think yesterday I said disparage, uh, but I think the first task will be to figure out what the word actually means. Okay, so let's reread the halakha we read yesterday uh, in Hilgos Tam Torah Vav Yodalev. Avon Gadol Hu Levazos Es Chachamim O Lisno Osan. It is a great iniquity to uh, levazos. Okay, so we'll leave that blank for a second, right? Something about disparaging or de- despising, but we won't commit to a translation. To be mavaza the chachamim or to hate them. Uh, okay, then he says, that's statement number one. Uh, statement number two, lo harva yushlaim ad shabizu ba tamid chachamim. Yushlaim was not destroyed until they were mavaza tamid chachamim in it. Shnimar, as it says, they malivim, they insulted, or uh, the Makbili says, uh, I think it's another word for like mocking. They mocked the Malachi Elohim, that's the Nevi'im. Uh, so there's our word, Boze. They, they were Mavaze, their statements. And they uh, blemished the words of their prophets. Okay. Klomar, what does it mean? Bozim Malam de Dvarav. It means, so when it says Boze Dvarav, it doesn't mean that they disparage God's words, they disparage the teachers of God's words. Okay. Vachin Zesh Amra Torah, similarly, the Torah says, Vim Bechukosai Timasu, if you will uh, reject, scorn my Chukim, Malam de Chukosai Timasu, uh, those who teach my Chukim, uh, if, you dis- if you scorn or uh, what do you call it, if you, um, uh, are repulsed by those who teach my chukim. Anyone who uh, degrades the chachamim or who's mavaz the chachamim does not have a portion of olam haba. And that's included in the statement of for he despair, he was mavaz the word of Hashem. Okay. Wow. It's amazing how you could read this on two different days and see different things. I'm already seeing different stuff, but I'm going to hold it back on that for a second. Okay. So let's start off with the end. Okay. Uh, let's look up that positive in context. Okay, Bamidbar 1531. Okay, and the reason why we're doing this, we're going to look at this from two angles. One is uh, in Tanakh, how the word Bizui is used, and then the other one is in the Rambam himself, how Bizui is used. And I, hopefully they're the same, but they might not be because Rabbinic Hebrew is in the Tanakh Hebrew, yeah? Uh, 1531. That's not a thing. That's not a thing. Oh, it is. Maybe it is. Hold on. <laughs> I was just looking the wrong saver. That's why. 1531. Okay. So the context here. Ah, okay. Very good. I mean, not very good, very bad, but very good in terms of we found it. Okay. So the context here is the Mukharif Umagadev, the one who is the uh, blasphemer. Okay. So we won't read all the psukim here, but. Oh, no, no, no. Sorry. One wait a second. It's not the blasphemer. It's the um, so this is in the chataos of uh, uh, like the special category of of chataos, and we're on pasuk lamid. Let's start with lamid. The hanefesh shertase biad rama, the hand that acts. Uh, the, sorry, the person, the soul that acts high handedly. Min ha ezra mina ger, uh, from the ezra, the uh, you know, native, and from the ger. Es Hashem hu magadev. He is blaspheming Hashem. And that soul would be cut off from among his people. Because the word of Hashem, he was mavaze, and his his Hashem's mitzvah, he uh, negated, or he, uh, how do they translate this? Hefar. They translate it as broke his commandments. I think there's like a fancier word, like abrogated or something like that, like, like to nullify, like to nullify covenant is made for your breeze. That soul will be certainly cut off. His sin is upon him. Okay. So the question is like, what's that case first of all? Okay. But it's, whatever that case is, it's describing it as being Muhazir Hashem. So let's look at a couple examples of this. Um, uh, or sorry, let's look at some of the Farshim on this. All right. So I'm going to start with the Targum. Okay. Uh, just to get uh, close to Pshat. He, uh, so Lamed is the Enosh Diyaved Bereish Gle, okay, so uh, a person who will act with an uncovered head, right? So uncovered head is like a, uh, 
a uh, idiom for like um, lacking reverence. Okay. Hello. Mini at Sivayo, Mini Giorai, Karaman Hashem, who margays. Okay. So he translates Magadev as to provoke. He's provoking Hashem. Vishtete Anasha Hawumi Goame, and that person will depart his uh, his people. I'm just going to pause and catch Chaim up. All right. Are al piskama da Hashem Basar. Basar. So they translate that as despise. Okay, I'm not familiar with basar. I mean, I know the kind that I eat, but that's not spelled that way. Um, let's just look at jastro, basar. Um, oh, it's right there. Basar is same. I guess that means whatever I had before this. Basar. Uh, to tread upon, to contend or to be overbearing. Okay, it's not really helping so much, <laughs> okay. But um, he's saying that he was, uh, he tread upon the word of Hashem, vias pikodohi ashni, and he like perverted uh, or changed his um, his his uh, mitzvah. Ish tete yishete nasha hu chove be. Okay, fine, All right. Okay, so this doesn't help us. So let's look at the Rabag, who's gonna provide uh, the halachic Torah Walpeh summary uh, and maybe even define the term if we're lucky. Okay, because we still don't know what this is referring to. In fact, we read, we encountered this yesterday because Rama mentioned this as one of the categories of people who lose their faith in the Haba is, uh, is Ose uh, Averis Biyad Rama, right? Like Yehoiakim. So either way, this will give us insight. Okay, Rabag says, um, oh, fun fact about Rabag on Bamidbar uh, is it's shorter than his other commentaries on Chumash. And the reason why he writes at the very end, he's like, he, he's, he basically says like, I'm sorry, this is so short. Like I wrote it very quickly and I didn't have access to my Sfarim. So like, like he just happened to do everything by memory, but uh, you know, so it turned out a little bit shorter. Okay, you gotta cut the guy a break. Um, okay, so he says, uh, uh-oh, he doesn't say anything on Lamed. Oh, sorry, wait. He cars, he cars, never he abona ba. Okay, that's just, all right, he doesn't say anything. What about in the Tualos? Uh, oh no, he doesn't say anything. Okay, who do we go to next? Who's going to save us? Uh, let's look at the Monet Mitzvos. See if the Sefer Chinuch counts this as something. Ayin. Is this just me? Chatas? No, that's uh, that's uh, Magadif. Okay, Magadif. Okay, we, we don't need that. Um, what about Tortmima, our hero? Hanefesh uh, Shertase, Tanur Rabbanan, Hanefesh Shertase, Biad Rama, Zeminah. Menash ben Chizkiah. Okay, so it's a specific person is uh, is uh, the Melech Menashe, right? Uh, who was one of the most uh, wicked kings ever. Shahaya Yoshev Vidoro. That's probably got to be Doresh, right? Not Dorosh. Vidoresh Bahagados Shodofi. He would sit and expound, like, I guess, Midrashim of uh, degradation. The Olive Nemar Bakabala. And regarding him, it is said in uh, in the Torah of Peh, Havi Moshchi. Uh, those who pull the iniquity with cords of nothing of uh, of, of vanity. Okay, this is in Perachel. Like, let's just see what the Torah to me says here. Rotzalomar bechinam below kohana hichote hayachote. So he was sinning for no reason. Uh, for no, for, sorry, for no for, for no reason without any pleasure, right? So it's one thing if you if you do an avera to get a pleasure, but yad rama means you're doing it like lahakis, like just as an act of of defiance. So, so he's darshaning all these psukim that uh, seem to be like, um, what do you call it? Like uh, not having any content, right? That the sister of Lotan was Timna. Timna was a pilegash to Eliphaz. Uh, Reuven went in the days of the barley of the wheat harvest. All of these drushos, he was not darshaning uh, anything. He was just uh, uh, mocking and uh, and and uh, being like degrading. The Eno Mavur, Lama Samcha Hagamara, Inyan Ze Al Halashon. Oh, you know, I got a good example of this, by the way, which I have to turn the recording off for. Um, <laughs> okay, so Menashe would take the psuk, these psukim, which you could learn, but he just would darshan them for uh, for degradation. Beinu mavur lama sampa hagamara inyan ze al halashon v'hanefesh asher tase biad rama. So the Torah to me says it's not clear why the Gemara um, attached this uh, 
interpretation to the language of a person who acts biad rama, right? Because you would think that that's doing actions, right? My shaykh zeh li yad rama. What does this have to do with yad rama? Venir dasamich asefa dekra. It seems like it is um, uh, uh, attaching this to the end of the pasuk. As Hashem hu magadev. He's blaspheming Hashem. Um, uh, I don't know what a chafmem stands for. Bialkut. As Hashem hu magadev zemenasha ben chizkia uma shekasav shayad doresh afu pish lo darash me uma kumosh kasavti af ulai hayad doresh. Okay, fine. So he's explaining that why the Gemara doesn't bring cases there. Okay, so that's that's very weird. Because this is, is this going to help? Oh, okay. Well, I guess I mean he's he's really like degrading Hashem. He's not degrading the rabbis, right? Okay, uh, we're, we're piecing this together here. Okay, let, let's see what these other drushos say. As Hashem um, I think that's not related to ours because that's talking about literal blasphemy. Um, Okay, that doesn't help us. Is that, is that like that root? Uh, it probably is. I don't know what Gadifa means, though. It would, are you thinking of a specific meaning? I, mean, I don't know other than blasphemy. Oh, yeah, yeah. oh, fine. Yeah, yeah. That's that's what it is. Yeah. Uh, um, okay, that's also not literal. Okay. Okay. Okay, so they interpret this as either an apicorus or someone who, um, this is always a tough phrase to translate, reveals facets of the Torah not in accordance with halakha. Um, okay, let's see. Oh, that's a long one. Meaning uh, that are against or that it shouldn't reveal? That, uh, seemingly that are against, meaning like you you interpret psukim in ways that are not in accordance with the halakha. Okay, um, not, like, I don't know. I mean, because the Rama, the, I think the Rama, did the Rama mention that in the list that we read yesterday? Hold on just a second, Magale. Yeah, the Rama mentioned this in uh, the list of people who lose their chalik and Haba. Um, and the way he defined it, Zeha Nikra Magale Panav Batora, he didn't say Shloka Halacha, even though he said, Metzcha Vagila Panav Lo Bosh Midivay Torah. That's very vague also, that he is brazenifying his forehead and revealing his face and is not ashamed from words of Torah. Yeah. So when there's machalkas, do you have to hold that the other side of machalkas is darshing not ke alacha? So uh, that's a good question. I think I think that's not what it means. I think it means when you are like, uh, oh, I think what it means is when you are like teaching um, uh, like the positions that are not in accordance with the halakha as if it's in accordance with the halakha. Like, like I was looking, um, <laughs> I saw someone ask on Facebook today that uh, do the Karaites take uh, ayin takas ayin literally, right? Uh, and uh, you know, you think that they, what? what? Eye for an eye. Uh, eye for an eye, eye. right, yeah. Um, so uh, apparently they do. Uh, they do hold that if you uh, intentionally uh, wound someone's eye, then you get your eye wounded also. So if you were to teach that, so if I'm just, let's say if I'm telling you this, that this is how the Karaites talk about it, then that's obviously not the halakha. But if I were to teach the psukim as if they were that, then that would be, we all have on him, yeah. Uh, I know this is not really the point of this question, but on that, that idea, yeah. do we not consider that like, it's more, it's worse, like psychologically, it's more painful to have to brace to get yourself to get your eye poked. It's like, the, the, Are you you're probably thinking of Rabbi Zimmer's here because I haven't talked about this. No, I'm just. Oh, when well, you said, do we conclude? I thought. Uh, did you say we? No. Oh, what do you say? I was well. Did, I guess we're not considering. Oh, you did. General. Okay, the general we. Okay. Yeah, 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 like that. Like even if, like if you said like okay, it's an eye for an eye. Fine. Like okay, but like it's like a way worse thing. It's like it's more painful. I would say to like break. Like I know now that I have this thing yeah. coming. So even then, would that even even the, even if you did take it literally, wouldn't that still be? not actually proportional. Oh, I see what you're saying. Uh, yeah, correct. Meaning that it would be impossible to do it under the exact know. circumstances yeah. with the exact same psychological pain. Right. right. Yeah, yeah, right, right. I mean, if we're going to say, oh, we're going to say, right. Yeah, I mean, right. It, it seems to be based on the results, not how you go about right. doing it. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, just uh, regarding your question, I don't want to look this up because it's too far off topic, but the Ramam uh, does say, the Ramam would say that it's worse pain when you know it's coming. 
Right. Uh, and the place where he says that, interestingly enough, is in Bris Mila, when he's explaining why we do circumcision on the eighth day uh, and not, <laughs> yeah, and not, not older, because he says that when you, uh, that pain, you know, so much of pain is psychological and an eight-year-old kid doesn't have the capacity to understand what's happening to him. Yeah. So there's, there's definitely physical pain, but it's not a psychological thing. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Sorry. Uh, okay. So um, this might be relevant to us. Okay. So this is on that. What did we just read? I just lost track. 80, oh, this is the um, saying that Devar Hashem Baza is an apikor. Oh, by the way, the context here is we're trying to figure out what the word Baza means in Tanakh. So we can figure oh, out what right, it means. Right. Oh, I didn't look that up. Yeah. Um, we could look that up. But um, <laughs> okay. Uh, so this was the statement that is an apikor or Megalit Panim Batorish Lokalach. I think we do. We should read this towards Mima. Oh, interesting. You know what I'm saying? Okay. So the Gemara concludes and says that Rabbi Elazar Hamodai says, one who desecrates Kachim, right, uh, uh, sacrifices, one who degrades the Muados. One who reverses the uh, bris milah, one who is magali panim b'torah shaloka halacha, and one who embarrasses his friend in public, uh, even though he has mitzvos amasim tovim, he doesn't have chelak alam haba. Why did my eyebrows go like that? Based on what we did yesterday. Yeah. Uh, because it talks about how many times it says in alam haba is, is meaningless, or not, or just not meaningless, just means. It's a bad thing. But yeah. We don't actually mean okay. That. It has so to do with that. Really, yeah. But notice the five that he put in the list. Okay. The Mechal the Kachim, Mavazan and Buados, reversing a Brismila, Magal and Panin Batorsh al Kalaha, and then embarrassing your friend uh, in public. Oh, is this the five that the Ram number? Say again? Isn't that what the Ram The Ram mentions all of those, but there's a catch. If you look at the Ramam's list, the first four he puts in the category of people who actually lose their chelak on Olam Haba, but then embarrassing uh, your friend, Hamavim Pnei Chavera Barabim, he puts in the category of the really, really bad Averos that they said you lose a chelak on Olam Haba. So the interesting thing is the way that the Ramam is going to learn this list. You remember, I was saying yesterday, I concluded by saying that, um, yeah, I, I concluded yesterday by saying that whenever you see the phrase in Lachelag Olam Haba in Chazal, you have to distinguish between what is an actual loss of Olam Haba and what is not. But you see from this example that the Ramam is going to learn that even in the same list, not all of them are literal. Yeah, it definitely seems like that. But you, you can't, you kind of can't blame him in the sense that, um, well, you can blame him, uh, but I'm blaming him. Yeah, no, I mean, the Rambam, so, okay, there's, there's going to be two approaches to um, right? If you hold that Olam Haba, that loss of Olam Haba is an Onesh, so then you can more comfortably rely on whatever Chazal say the Masora is, right? right? But if you hold that is a reality of your soul, so then you can't just say, like, you know, actions X, Y, and Z lose your chelak olam haba. You have to explain how it works, right? Like, like according to the Raman, the only way you can lose your chelak olam haba seemingly is if you have a, a, a distort, if you do a, an avera that distorts one of the ikarim. So it's not so simple that he can say that like making a nickname for your friend is losing your chelak olam haba. The, the Raman would say like, explain to me the, mecha- the metaphysical mechanisms. No, and that's a question that I think it requires thought that like that, you know, certain things are easy. Like if you say someone who's Mahal Shabbos before Hesia uh, is Chayav Karis, that makes sense because Shabbos is my Zebrashis. And if you do a demonstrative public act of renouncing that, so then that's uh, th- that shows a distortion. OK, but something like uh, replicating the Katoras, <laughs> you know, or like eating Chalev, the Ram's going to have a much harder time saying that you're Chayav Karis for that. Yeah. Okay. Um, okay. So, so let's let's follow his logic here. The beer who the explanation is Ah, okay. There you go. This might be the the, the route. In all of these things, there is an allusion to kfira to denial and a degradation of the word of Hashem. Okay. Why? If you desecrate Kachim, it's like you are degrading the Kedusha Hashem. Okay, that I understand, right? So Kedusha Hashem is that Hashem is completely, um, you know, separate from physicality. 
And objects that are designated as, as hectish are designated to be a uh, representative of that like idea, you know? So if you uh, degrade them, it's making a statement about, about Hashem. Uh, the example I always used to give in, in uh, with high school, even though it's not an exact example, is like if someone burns an American flag, like in public especially or intentionally, then like, are they actually renouncing like America's values? No, but the action itself like is a demonstration of that renouncing, you know? So like, if you go in there with the assumption that they're doing this knowingly and they know what it stands for, so then it's 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 tantamount to rejecting the American values. How I, is that not actually? Because, because if I burn a flag because I need to um, get warmth in the winter or something like that, like we don't say that the act is intrinsically a, uh, a renouncing of American values. It's, oh, it's, it's the it's the way that they do it, you know? Okay, it's like, it's making a statement. So you'd have to see that there's some sort of like necessary reason he's doing it. Right, which is why I think- But even that, then it's still tantamount then? Why should it even be tantamount if it's for warmth? Um, well, this, I, I think if it's for, if it's for, um, if it's clear that it's for another reason, then I, I wouldn't say that we equate it with that. For similarly, like if you have a, you know, if a person intention, you know, like a uh, worships of Odazara, right? Uh, then that would seem to be a, a renouncing of Hashem. But if it's clear that the person is under is a, being held at gunpoint, then we wouldn't equate their action with the renouncing of Hashem. You know. Okay, so what's the, what's the situation in which it's he doesn't need he doesn't necessarily need to do it, but it's also <laughs> not already in and of itself in renouncing. How is it? Because is middle ground? because I I think that it, I, I'm I'm trying to say that it can't be according to the realm. I don't see any way you can do a physical action that destroys your soul because of the physical action. It would have to be something where the physical action mm -hmm. is expressive of a inner already, denial. It already exists in destruction. Right. And what I'm saying is like in a vacuum, if someone violates Shabbos in public, you know, knowingly, then you can assume that that's like a, that that's a renouncement, a renouncing of the idea of, of Shabbos. Okay, okay, same thing if you degrade, degrade the, the uh, Moados, then Chazal equate that with Avodos Kochavim. Um, this is so Mo'adim represent the miracles and wonders that Hashem did for us. So if you degrade them, then it's like you're degrading, uh, you're denying the miracles. Uh, right. And when you degrade them, it's like you're degrading all, I, I can't use the word degrading. I got to leave this untranslated because that's what we're trying to do. It's like your Mavaza, the Emuna, the belief in all of these, uh, these miracles. So if you explain Torah in a way that's not like halacha, that's denying the Masora. I don't know what Dalal Alf stands for here. Lashem. If you are if you uh, embarrass your friend in public, it's uh, then it's like uh, a, since since person is created b'tel melukim, it's like you're reading mavaze the tel melukim and not sensing the kavod and Dalal Alf for Hashem. Lashem. I don't know. Dalal was Lashem. I don't know. Yeah. Is the Indian of Hashem, the idea of Hashem. Yeah. Yeah. Covered with Derek Eretz Lashem. Yeah, that's good. al Davar. Yeah. Okay, fine. Okay, so this. Because like he'd only look up certain thing as like, oh, yeah. Because that was like considered like his domain. Oh, like, interesting. Never heard of that one before. Yeah, it's interesting. Um, Okay, uh, and then you see a couple other ones here. Tanya Ida Kidvarshan Baza Zeha Omer in Tor Minishmain, Bafil Amar Kolator Kula Minishmain, Futsumi Pasa Zeshlo Amar Kashbrako El Moshe Mipi Atmo, Bafil Amar Hutmi Diktuk Ze, Mikav Homer Ze, Mikazer Shavazo, Hare Hu Bichal Dvarshan Baza. So if you deny any Tor Minishmain, even one, I know what you're going to ask, even one Pasak, even one Kava Homer, even one uh, Diktuk, then it's like you're denying. Um, uh, uh, tournaments around. You're going to say, well, there are a bunch of people who do deny those things well, yeah, who are first, like within I, the Masora. I, I, yeah. like, I mean, like, I guess first I feel like the Ibn Ezra, like, Ibn Ezra, right. That was like, the first what, example I thought of also. What, 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 like, how could you have 
but they're clearly machlokas. I mean, as in, mm-hmm. there's be, like, this base hill all, like, the, except the authority of Beis Shammai is called the and Gzera Shavas. Right. My, my guess is that what it means is that if you hold, um, uh, how would I put this? Hold on. Yeah, it's a good question. I don't know the answer. I mean, I, I know Rafael has talked about this before with the um, with the Ibn Ezra and uh, and the Rambam's Ikar, because the Rambam says in the Ikarim, if you don't say that every pasuk was written by Moshe Rabbeinu, then that's a kofar b'Torah. And the Ibn Ezra holds that the last how many pasukim were written by um, Yoshua, and then maybe a couple other pasukim also. Is that yeah? yeah but it's also says in the Gemara. Like, yeah, it's a machlok like, in the Gemara, like, right? I, I, Honestly, the way I view this much more than the raw bombs of karma very much have lots and lots of kashas on them. Yeah, well, you're not the only one. But, um, <laughs> but uh, Rapesach, uh, Rapesach, though, has a theory about the Ikarim, which I, I don't know if he's revised since I heard it. But his theory is that within each Iker, there is the core of the Iker, and then there's the Rambam's formulation of what that doctrine is. So let's say, for example, you know, Ramam holds that Olam Haba is entirely non-physical. Ramban holds that Olam Haba is in this world, right? Ramam holds Olam Haba is, is uh, no miracles. Ramban holds Olam Haba is miraculous. Is the Ramam going to say that the Ramban is a kofir because he doesn't hold by his view of Olam Haba? Of course not, right? But in other words, if the Ramban denied Olam Haba, then the Ramam would consider him a kofir. But if he says, no, I hold my Olam Haba, but I have a difference of opinion about what Olam Haba is, then no. Similarly with the Torah, you know, again, Ram can't deny there's Machlokas in the Gemara about the, um, what do you call, uh, about, um, uh, yeah, the, uh, the, yeah, the authorship of those Pesukim, or let's say the Mashiach, right? That you have the opinion in the Gemara of, uh, that says that, that the Mashiach already came and it was Chizkiah, uh, right? Um, <laughs> yeah, I know you like that one. Um, but uh, so Rama is not going to say that that, that Manda Amar is a, a kofir uh, because he denies Mashiach. He's going to say, okay, look, we both hold that Mashiach exists, but it's a difference of opinion about how that played out. Yeah. Whereas in, on the, you know, the Rama, when it comes to God, does that. Whereas in people who will still hold that God will hold it. Right. Hold it so the exception, God, right. The exception is uh, so what he's saying is that. The Ram, you, this move might work out for uh, a lot of the Ikarim, but not for the ones about God. Um, what, and what's the situation there? Uh, that the Ram, let's say the first uh, five Ikarim, that God is an independent existence, that he's one, that he's not physical, that he's outside of time, and that you only worship God. Um, so the Ramam does hold that a mistake in any of these areas is uh, causes a loss in Olam Haba, as opposed to the other set. Um, were there any Rishonim he argues with? Is that he says that they're the ones yeah, that yeah, 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 uh, yeah. Because there, there are, there are who. Seems so basic, I don't understand how you. Yeah, I mean, there, 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 there are people who disagree with those things. So the the. Um... Not like you deny that. Though. <laughs> yeah, they have understood, but, but the wrong would say that they don't have a clear little yeah, right. Yeah. right, yeah, and so that's that's your question, right? Like, the, like they could do help God with physical, right? Right, right. and the wrong would hold that they don't have a clear little Haba. So the answer to that, and I don't know if I, if if Rapizak said that. Oh no, no Rapizak did say this. So Rapizak distinguished between the first five Ikarim and then the last uh, eight. Okay, because the first five Ikarim are not dependent on Torah. The first five Ikarim, you know, let's say, for example, okay, here, here's, a, here's the test case, okay. Did Avram Avinu hold by Mashiach? Of course not. Oh, he's a kofir. Of course he's not a kofir. <laughs> okay, right? Because the only way you know about Mashiach is through Torah, you know? Um, similarly, you know, the, the Ramam holds that, um, you know, that many people, uh, Jew, well, you know, people from our nation and people not from our nation had, you know, were Hasidim uh, and had a Chelet Olam Haba before Matan Torah. So Rapesach said, and I think Menachem Kellner has a similar argument, the first five Ikarim are uh, like our actual, like, like you know, uh, metaphysical realities that your soul's uh, existence after death is contingent on of having like the correct ideas. The other Ikarim, which are only, we only know because of Torah, are subject to this distinction that Rapesach was making before about there's a core Iker and and then there's uh, there's like differences of opinion. And if you weren't exposed to Torah, you know, then like of course you have no, have no way of knowing about this. And like you you would have a halach malam haba. And Rapesa explains how that can be. I just don't remember the details enough to give it over. Okay, 
So let's get back to our topic here. Okay, so uh, so our, our question was, what does Mavaza mean? So what do we see from here? Again, just, I, I know these are all different Mamari Chazal, but in context, Kidvar Hashem Baza. So Baza does not seem to mean like mocking, right? Because these people who, you know, yeah, Menashe was mocking uh, people or was mocking Torah, but like someone who denies Torah Minash Mayim is not mocking the Devar Hashem. So how do you, I mean... What sense do you get of baza here? To, rep- to represent the opposite or something contrary to it. Yeah, it seems to be something like 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 some mm-hmm. like. Mm-hmm. Say again. Mm-hmm. Like, you know, like, well, see, see, no, so, like, uh, right. I mean, I would say more along the lines of what you're saying is oppose. Degrade to me carries a connotation of like some form of like ridicule or downplaying, which might we might find out that that's the case because we're going to see a couple more examples. I don't get that from here though. Like if you say, unless you just mean degrade by like lowering the status of, yeah, because again you can say that for the Moadim example, right? Is if you like miss you know lower the status of the Moadim, you know. Also, I feel like yeah, degrading. It also could lend itself to saying it doesn't have an, like a chiddish or a different new idea. It just doesn't contain all of the right ones. It's an incomplete thing. Whereas like an opposing, like an opposite thing is like, no, it not only didn't finish in developing and understanding the full thought, mm-hmm. the, the proper yeah. principles, no, no, but it contradicts. Yeah. Like it's, there's something, complete. there's a new thing. Like in- I hear that. Yeah. <clears throat> no, I mean, I don't think I mean, someone like, well, I don't yeah, I would agree. Yeah, but that, but that's just like the ultimate form of opposition, though, right? Meaning, I mean, okay, maybe I'm misunderstanding what you're saying. You're are you, you're not saying you have to come up with something new, because yeah, are you in order for this to be bizoy? Um Because because that's what Chaim's asking. He's saying like if you just say uh, you know like I'm just rejecting Torah. You don't have to like replace it with something new. You have to just be. Mm-hmm. I would say no. I would say yeah because the other thing I would just call ignorance. I would just call it the degra- It's like an incomplete knowledge. Whereas mm-hmm. degradation mm-hmm. to me seems like these are all things that you you do. You're seeming to like con- to contradict means you have to hold something different. No, I don't think so. No, if you just say I don't hold by Torah. I don't hold by something. Right. You hold that Torah isn't true then. Right. So that's the contradiction. So then, isn't Why that going to be? It, aren't all I'm cases? Not, aren't all cases going to be? Yeah. Uh, what? Aren't I'm all cases going to fall into this category then? Like yeah. you're going to? No, because the other ones aren't a, a purposeful holding. There's no hold. They're just not aware that they're even. It's a lack of awareness in, in what they're in what they're uh, positioning uh, mm-hmm. and their understanding of what they're saying. I, mean, okay, I, I don't. 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 Mm-hmm. It's a true, tr- yeah, it is. No, but it's not just ignorance. It's a choice that it's different <laughs> because they still know that they're not doing it. That in order, they still they're still aware of that. Whereas mm-hmm. someone who doesn't know that they were breaking childless is the, they're just ignorant. Oh, fine, yeah, we're not talking about that. Yeah. Well, isn't this these cases of how do you say Baza? M- yeah, Mavaza. Mavaza, aren't there? Aren't they like doing contrary things? I, 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 I don't know how you're defining contrary. I mean, like, like they're it's, breaking things knowingly. Well, was definitely doing it intentionally, right? That's that's clear. But like in these other cases, right? There's not a mice, but let's take these other cases that we just read. Of let's say, like, if you degrade the um, uh, the Moadin. You know, like, does that have to be intentional? Like, or can it just be like someone just do, you does know does I malacha? I, I don't know. Right. What's the place of that? Which one? Uh, in uh, the Rama. Oh, the Rama. Uh, oh, this is Chuva three fourteen. I don't think someone who like in malacha <laughs> no, I don't think so either. Yeah, yeah. All right, l- l- let's let's not get bogged down on on the issue of um, ignorance versus not. Yeah, we're going to say another point. Uh, I was just thinking the example. I think of like the so a lot of people who would name who would like Dolph could name their kids Hogger or just name, name, <laughs> like name the kid. hypothetically. Yeah, like just like you know, like a lot of the early designers who were like choose the wrong instruments, not. Uh huh. That's interesting. Yeah. 
Yeah, I, that, I, I would classify that as Bizwe, even if it's not the type of Bizwe that gets you a loss of Chelek Olam Haba. But um, okay, let's, let's, here's what I wanted to do to get more examples from Tanakh. So um, this is a, a tool that you can use, which is the Sefer Hashirashim of the, of the Radak, where he'll bring in Sukim that like exemplify the different Shirashim. Okay, so we did the first one already. Um, but look at now Shmuel 2, Shmuel Bay's uh, 12, 9. So in the Tanakh, which I got Tanakhs for everyone. Oh, yeah, I did get Tanakh for everyone. Um, it is on page. That's nothing. Shmuel Bay's, yeah. It's on page 749. Oh, it's six pages off. Oof. Um, I think this is it. Uh, yeah. So this is, oh, I was just talking about this last night. Um, this is when David rebukes, uh, when Nassim rebukes David for, um, for the, the sin of Bathsheba, right? So let's just start from the beginning of 12. We'll just read it in English. All right, Hashem said to, uh, sent Nathan to David. He came to him and told him there were two men in one city, one rich and one poor. The rich man had very many sheep and cattle, but the poor man had nothing except one small ewe that he had acquired. He raised it and it grew up together with him and his children. Uh, I always picture it sitting at the table eating breakfast with him, uh, but I don't think it did that. It ate from his bread and drank from his cup and lay in his bosom. Maybe it did sit at the table. <laughs> it's drinking from his cup. Yeah, I don't know. It became like a daughter to him. A wayfarer came to the rich man. He was reluctant to take his own sheep from his own sheep or cattle to prepare for the visitor who had come to him. So he took the poor man's ewe and prepared it for the man who had come to him. Okay, that's the end of Nassim's uh, review or of speech, his muscle. David was very indignant about this man. And he said to Nassim, as Hashem lives, any man who does this deserves to die. And he must pay fourfold for the ewe because he did the deed and because he had no pity. Nassim then said to David, you are that man. Thus said Hashem, God of Israel, I anointed you as king over Israel and I saved you from Shaul's hand. I gave you the house of your Lord and the women, women of your Lord into your bosom. And I gave over to you the house of Israel and Judah. And if this were not enough, I would have increased for you this much and this much again. Here's the thing. Why have you, here's the Hebrew, Madua Bazisa Estevar Hashem, Lazos Harab Enai, Is Uria Hachiti Hikisa Becherev, Ves Ishto Lakachta Lachala Isha, Ve Osa Haragta Becherev Bene Amon. Why have you scorned the word of Hashem? Scorn is another word we haven't said yet. Doing that which is evil in his eyes, you have struck Uria the Hittite with a sword. His wife you have taken to yourself for a wife, while you have. Uh, while well, him you have killed by the sword of the children of Ammon. So th their Bazisa sounds like it also has like this uh, implication of like audacious behavior, you know, like like brazen behavior, like like how could you do something this blatantly like bad, you know? That's what I mean, right? That's why I feel like it can't be from ignorance. Yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah that's what I said. I, I do hear that. I just don't want to get bogged down into the daily like um, <laughs> the, the particular cases. Is, is, that's the reason. I yeah. And yeah. also... The, to scorn something, you have to again do something to that's in contra in a contradiction. And mm -hmm. the thing is, you scorn. Yeah, <laughs> I just don't think you have to have a separate uh, uh, an opposite doctrine. Well, I don't know where else it would come from. Okay. Yeah. Well, I, I feel like this might be just a myth in you. Yeah, I think so. Also, <laughs> opposite doctrine. By like not moving in something, you think that that automatically is not. That's what it sounded like you were saying, but then by what? When then okay, then we all are, it's, it's amazing. What no, is. if you're that's why I have to bring in that you that's why to me it is necessary to say that he's aware of what he's doing. That it, that's why it's a scorning thing. No one not even if you think that it's ignorant. Well then it's good. You know. Then then that's my point. No, fine. I don't right. So I'm saying yes. this kind of it sounds like you do need to have an opposite. It it seems like he like he he somehow that doesn't mean that he has to be you. You have to be a conscious. Okay, I guess it's a right, let's let, let, let's let's oh, go on. Uh, the, here's one that we're all familiar with, uh, which is in Miguel's Esther, okay. uh, in one seventeen. Um, in fact, you, you don't even need to look this up. We'll just read it. This is um, uh, when Vashti is um, uh, refuses to come to Akashverosh, and uh, and then he he sends out the letters, or sorry, he sends out the decree. Uh, and it says, Ki var al kol So the 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 matter of the queen, meaning the Vashti's refusal to obey, will go out uh, to all the women, lehavzos balehen to lehavzos their husbands in their eyes. 
saying that the king Ahasuerus said to, that Vashti should come and uh, before him and she did not come. So that's so he's he's arguing that the that the women's husbands are going to be um, get bezoid by uh, by the wives. So that's another type of bezoid. Because of what? Because they they're going to all talk about how Vashti, how Ahasuerus summoned Vashti and she didn't come. So then that's going to cause the women in the kingdom to not obey their husbands. Oh, the father, her, her, her example. Yeah. They're going to look at their husband like he's not worth listening to. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Okay. Um, listening to. Uh, yeah. Uh, okay, so that's a different kind of bezoin than what we've seen, right? Yeah. Well, how's it different? Yeah, so. Well, it's different in that it's not in regards to God, right? This is a social bezoin, right? That find the, 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 the participants are different, but the actions seem entirely the same. Uh, yeah, well, so the actions have to do with not obeying right. in a, yeah, in like a brazen way. Yeah. Um, okay. Oh, and then similarly, oh, in the next, the very next Pasuk, Im uh, al Tov, this is Memuchan talking, if it is good to the king, let a royal proclamation uh, go out from before him, uh, and let it be written in the laws of, of Persia and Media and not uh, uh, um, go away. Oh, sorry, I just skipped the, I read the, the, the wrong one. And today, the, uh, the officers of Persian media will say, um, uh, you know what? I'm just going to cheat and use uh, Rabbi Nevetsky's wife's translation because I trust it. Uh, and this day, the noble women of Persia and Media who heard the queen's words will say likewise to all the king's officers, and there will be more than enough scorn and anger. Okay, fine. So it's just going to spread. Okay. Yeah. All right. So let's actually, I think we've had a, a enough of these examples to start formulating a definition. Let me see how many more he has. Yeah, he has too many, uh, Spite. Too many more examples. Spite is another good word. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so, so the question, let's go back to our original source here. So the question is, based on Tanakh, what does, what would we say this means? He's a Shabizu Ba Tamid Chachamim. Yeah. Now, notice one thing here, by the way. I did not notice this when I read it yesterday. Okay. So, Avon Gadol Hu Lahavzos Esa Chachamim Olis Naosan. Lo Haru Yishlaim Ad Shabizu Ba Tamid Chachamim. Getting quotes the Pasuk, Shinemar, Vayihu Malivim Bamach Elhim Ubozim Devarav. Mataatim Bin Viav. Klomar Bozim Malamde Devarav. Okay, so the puzzle says they're both at the word, his words, or their their words, and then the Ram says they're mavaze the the teachers of their words. Okay, then the teachers of of his words they uh, they rejected. So what I didn't realize yesterday is the emphasis on bizui being attached to words, right? Yeah. And the teachers of the words. So, so it does. So it's not just uh, like mocking or disparaging. It's like having a scornful attitude towards the the authority of. I think it would probably be the uh, the way that this would go. Right? Like <laughs> undermining the authority in a scornful <laughs> spirit. Mm -hmm. The example of. <laughs> that's yeah. Not, it's born, uh, right. They're not going to be their husbands. That seems quite doctrinal. If, if you're going to the very root of authority, yeah, that's like that requires some understanding now. Of yeah, definitely. Yeah, yeah, definitely. Um, yeah. So we're not just talking. So so scratch what I said yesterday. We're not just talking about like you know mocking chachamim, unless the mockery is stemming from this or results in this. You know, yeah. yeah. Like if you make fun of a chacham for having a big nose, that's not really like uh, in his category. You're not dealing with the authority that he put, that he's. Represents. Yeah, right, right. Um, well, yeah. Can you argue that that means, like, not, 
No, because it's the same reason that why when you stand for Torah, it's you're standing really for the Torah when a oh, rabbi comes in. Mm -hmm. right. I'm not really standing for his big nose or how great or any of it. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Right. Yeah. When you hear your mountain home, I don't think it's like I have a mark of the Right. It can be mocking the person. Right. 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 Yes. But, but the point that I'm making is that it's the, the problem with the mockery is that it undermines their authority. Right. And that that's mm -hmm. what it's about. Right. It's yeah. Just, like, for, for example, which is not the case, so it, it's lesser. No, I don't know if it has to. No. Right. I don't know if it intentionally has to undermine the authority. Right. Like, uh, and like, uh, you know, I have no it's gonna it's gonna happen every no time right yeah right yeah i'm only differentiating this from let's say if you mock another jew that's also highly problematic but it doesn't partake with this problem at all right you're right. Not, yeah. right but right but every you're saying every act of doing it no matter what the motive or the context is going to undermine their that's Oh, I, th I think I'm the answer is yes. Is, okay, I, I'm inclined to say yes, but there's still more to look at. So yeah. I, guess I can make, I can make this simpler by saying I'm not necessarily so focused on necessarily the motive, but the belief. Whether you intend it or not, you do believe this, even if you're not. So I, I, I'm, I, I think Chaim is correct that um, that I mean, it doesn't depend on what you believe. It depends on what are you doing. Do you do, do you ever do anything contrary to what you believe? That it's much closer between Socrates and, uh, and Aristotle, uh, you know, whether you can act against your knowledge or not. Uh, right. Yeah. So I, 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 I don't. Okay, I guess if you're going to hold it by the side of it, so you cannot do it, go act against, at least in that moment, what you're thinking, then, then I guess, then it would be. Good right. Idea. Yeah. I don't, I don't think, I, I think the point here, though, is that it doesn't matter. The point is, is whatever it is that you're doing is, uh, is the obvious. You know? <laughs> yeah. And this is right. So, so let me show you two other sources here okay the first one which we don't have here and i'm not going to try to find it in the kafeh is the rambam in the pirsha mishnayos um oops that's not what, what I about your example when you said that you've accidentally you know made yes yeah, so i retract that uh that um oh no no i don't retract that i, I think it depends on, on on the the example like like if you um you know uh if what you're doing has the effect of diminishing the uh the authority of the chacham then it would be in this category yeah but what i what i retracted yesterday though is that it's not one act of doing this it's someone who's accustomed to doing this right i mean one act is still a novera but it doesn't cause you it doesn't fall into the category of losing your chaylik um what was i looking up uh Mavaze. oh so the ramam says this example wait and we haven't discussed yet why right why they it's got to be no we haven't discussed that yet um Oh, wait, what was I looking up? Um, yeah, okay, so this is a fun one. Um, I don't know the context here. Uh, this is in the, the Pirish Mishnayos, though, of the Ram, hooked on to the Pirish Mishnayos. So he says, um, uh, Since Chazal knew the Indian Zeh, Shekol Divrem Berurim Unikim, the Imbahem Sigim, uh, that all of their words were clear and refined and they don't have any impurities. Sivu alehem, v'hishiru, shlo yilag adam alehem. They commanded people to, uh, and warned them to not mock them. V'amru, and they said in Gitin, kol hamalig adivre chachamim nidon b'tsoi rotachas. Anyone who mocks the words of chachamim should be, uh, um, uh, his, his uh, punishment is that he's going to be boiled in excrement. Okay? Okay, so what does this mean? Okay, so this is this is a great thing. I, I never, I don't think I, I've seen this until today. Sorry, There is no boiling excrement greater than than idiocy, than foolishness. Okay, Then the foolishness which causes you to mock. All right. The Alkane Lotimsa Laola Marchik Divrehem Ella Ish Mavakish Taiva Venos in Yisron Lahanaos Hamurgashos. Therefore, the only people who you'll ever find who uh, mock Chazal's words are people who seek Taiva and Venos in Yisron Lahanaos Hamurgashos and find favor in bodily pleasures. Asher Lo Heir Libo Badavarim Hama Urim Habihirim and whose minds have never been illuminated by the uh, luminaries. Mufneshiadu Amitas Divrehem Kulo Beesegahu Koyimem. Oh, hold on, is this related? No. Okay, fine. Yeah. yeah. So in other words, he, he he's saying that. Um. So he's, he here he's also attaching to mocking the chachamim here. 
uh, sorry, he's attaching mocking the Chachamim to like undermining their 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 words, you know. Um, Why do they, so if he's saying, they're saying that this thing that says they will be boiled in excrement is really that they already are. Yeah, yeah, is that they already are boiling in excrement, uh, and that's, that's what causes them to do. I just don't know why they, why, why would they, why would they say will be then? Well, it doesn't say will be. It says that their sentence is in. Yeah, okay. yeah, yeah. Their sentence. Yeah, yeah. I, I think because that's the real punishment. The real punishment is uh, is the being steeped. Continuation steep. of that state. Yeah, is being. Yeah, and, and not. Not. And it's. I think it's a little worse than a continuation. Is you're really like, like furthering it by mocking the. Uh, you know the. Right. Right. right, right. You're yeah. Entrenching yourself more in your in the pit that you're stuck in. Yeah. Okay, one more source for today, and then we'll uh, we'll uh, have to stop, and then we'll we'll have to come back to this tomorrow. So we saw earlier that the Ramam, uh, you know, I, I read through the categories where you actually lose your chelik and haba, and one of the categories is kofir b'torah. This is in uh, Shuva Gimel Ches. Uh, so there are three categories of, of kofir b'torah. Um, sorry, three categories of yeah of kofir b'torah. There's Omer uh, in Torah Minashemayim. There's one who says the Torah doesn't come from Hashem. Okay, fine. Even one pasuk, um, even one word. Uh, if they say Moshe said even one of these things, then that's kofar. Okay, that's number one. Uh, someone who denies the explanation of the Torah. Okay, that's torshbal peh. And someone who undermines the the tellers. Of the Torah, okay. Kagon Tzadok Ubaisos, like Tzadok and Baisos who led these uh, movements, um, who which were like a uh, you know denying Torah to all path, okay. And then the third category is HaOmer Shabore Hechlif Mitzvah Zobe Mitzvah Cheres, someone who says that God exchanged one mitzvah for another, who kavar batla Torah Zo, or said that the Torah is like null and void. Avapi Shehi Haisam Im Hashem, even though it was from Hashem. Kagon Hanosim Hagarian, like the Christians and the Muslims. Or the yeah, Kol Echad Mitzlosha Elo Kofor Betora. Okay, so each one of those Kofor Betora. So in this category of denying Torah Shabbat Peh, he's saying two things: if you deny the Torah Shabbat Peh itself, or if you deny Machakish Magideha, you undermine its tellers. Okay, so I'm going to show you something that that um, uh, Rabbi Arye Sklar is he a um, yeah. Miguel? Yeah. So he 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 sent me this this morning. Um, that uh, I've always heard this quoted, but I've never read it inside. The Rav's position on Machakish Magideha. Okay, so here's what the rub that's not the rub at all. Here's what the rub says. Okay, and I don't know the context. Um, I, I'll, I'll write down that you just put rub thing. <laughs> um, so he says, uh, third, I don't know what this is the third of Kabbalah's Oma Hushamayim, which is an identical act with that of Talmud Torah. This is from a speech, which is why, why it's going to sound speechy. Um, requires us to revere and to love and to admire the words of Chachmei Hamasora, be they Tanaim, be they Amorayim, be they Rishonim. I don't care. This is our prime duty. They are the final authorities. An irresponsible statement about Chazal borders, I don't like to use the word, but according to my Maimonides, it is on the heretic. Because Ramam says about Tzedukim, the Ramam says, who is a Tzeduki? The Ramam in Peregim of Hilchos Tshuva Halachaches, which we just read, says, V'chin ha-kofer b'pirusha v'hu torsh v'alpeh v'hamachachish magideha k'otzadu kubaisos. It is very strange. I want to, I wanted to discuss it with my father, Zikron Libracha. If he says that whoever denies the truthfulness or the authenticity of Torah Walpe is a tzaduki, why did he add Machachish Magida, uh, whoever denies the authority of the scholars of the Masora? So apparently the Ramam says that under the category of Kofrin Batora are classified not only those who deny that, for instance, Nisu Hamayim is required or Arava Shabbat Mikdash is required or that they deny Torah Walpeh. There's no doubt about it. But moreover, even those who admit the truthfulness of the Torah Walpeh, but they are critical of Chachmei Chazal as personalities who find fault in Chachmei Chazal, fault in their character, Rahman al or in their behavior, in their conduct, say that Chachmei Chazal were prejudiced which actually has no impact upon the halacha. Nevertheless, he is to be considered a kofar. What does it mean, machachish magideha? He denies the perfection and the truthfulness of Chachmei Chazal, not of the Torah again, but of the Chachmei Chazal as personalities, as real personae, as far as their character is concerned, their philosophy is concerned, their outlook on the world is concerned. Okay, and he goes on and he says, I don't want to go on a link here, one more paragraph, and let me add something which is very important. 
not only the halachos, but also the chazakos, which Chachmei Chazal have introduced, are indestructible. We must not tamper not only with the halachos, but even with the chazakos. For the chazakos, which Chazal spoke of, rest not upon transient psychological behavioral patterns, but upon permanent ontological principles rooted in the very depth of the human personality, in the metaphysical human personality, which is as changeless as the heavens above. Okay, I saw another source which, which uh, qualifies that, but the point is that he's saying, that denying Torah Shwal Peh is when you actually deny Torah Shwal Peh. But Machish Magidah is when you, you impugn like Chazal as personalities, which has the effect of, of unraveling Torah Shwal Peh, you know? And um, yeah, meaning saying that, oh, you know, uh, Chazal passed in this way because they were misogynist. Oh, like or totally like, uh, say, yeah, yeah, right, right. Oh, um, yeah, nice. or saying that, like, uh, you know, Rashi, uh, Poskin this way in Yai Nessa because he was a wine merchant and he was afraid for his business, you know. Right. Uh, and I, I, again, I've heard this quarter from the Rav a lot, but it seems to be in the same area that we're saying because it's undermining Chazal's authority, but via their personas, not via like just outright denying their words, Can you know. Can say that, um, that they're right and that they have part of the reason that they knew about this area of halacha and that they're right? Is because he happened to have the experience of this, you know, he was a merchant. Yeah, that you could say. Yeah, yeah, because that's open in the Gemara that there are cases like that also. Yeah, so this is not, now keep in mind, this is not Mavazi to Mechachamim, but it's in the same area, I'm saying, you know, because this is someone who, like, oh. uh, sorry, say it again. Yeah, and, and that was actually the question. So this was sent to me by Rabbi Dan Margulies this morning. And, and I, I asked him a question. I said, I said, the Ramam seems to differentiate between Mahlish Magidaha and Mavaze Tamid Fahamin, whereas the Rav seems to be saying that it's like one category. And uh and so like uh you know, we have to work that out. I have to stop recording, but I'll listen to the questions as I pack up. I gotta go to tutor now. But um uh yeah, let me just stop this first. Yeah, what were you gonna say? Okay.